Wolves have had several firms over the years but the best known were the Temple Street Mafia, the George Hotel, the Subway Army and the Yam Yam Army. In the 70s the George Hotel was the main Wolves pub and the center of action until the Subway Army took over in the late 70s into the 80s. Unfortunately, the infighting between the George Hotel boys and the Subway Army meant Wolves didn't have the organizational skills of the ICF and Headhunters, but on their day, they were a formidable force, especially at home, with their favorite tactic of ambushing away fans in their subways. They probably weren't a match for the main firms, such as West Ham's ICF, Man United's Red Army or Chelsea Headhunters, but they could, on a good day, be a handful, particularly at home when the South Bank had no fence pre-February 1979, and their favorite tactic was to break through the police lines and attack other firms, some held, like West Ham, some didn't like Leeds service crew, see 1977 Wolves v Leeds. Please bear in mind, there weren't that many videos back in the days, so we have to be creative whilst telling the stories. Some of their well-known incidents include 1972 Wolves v Leeds United 20,000 Leeds United fans descend on Wolverhampton for a night match that decided whether they won the title or not. Wolves won 2-1 so Leeds did not win the title. It's rumored that this match caused the animosity between the two sets of fans that lasts until this day, because the Leeds fans boasted of taking the Wolves' end, the North Bank, when in fact, they were all in the South Bank, which wasn't a designated end of Wolves' firm until 1974. Plus, in the video, when Wolves score their second goal, you can clearly see no Leeds fans in the North Bank. Also, there were much publicized reports of bribery attempts by high-profile Leeds players, all adding to the intensity of the drama. Leeds legend Billy Bremner was later awarded £100,000 in libel damages. Lots of running battles after the match with disgruntled Leeds fans baying for blood. 1975 Wolves v Leeds United Historically, Wolves went in the North Bank and left the massive South Bank to away supporters, along with normal home fans. However, this all changed at this match. Due to some bad feeling with Leeds fans during a title decider match in 1972, Wolves firms all decided to go into the South Bank en masse for the first time. Leeds took 3,000 but were chased all over the South Bank by hungry Wolves fans. This was the start of four years of battles with many firms until a fence went up in April 1978 which stopped the trouble inside the ground at least. 1976 Man United v Wolves, FA Cup. Wolves take 3,000 to Old Trafford for this FA Cup sixth round match. 1,500 take the football special and after a brief encounter with some locals outside the train station, get met by the Red Army at a junction approaching the ground. Wolves get battered by the Red Army. Some don't manage to make it to the ground. Inside the ground United attack Wolves fans in the scoreboard end, but Wolves manage to repel the attacks. After the match it's a free for all, with desperate Wolves fans hiding their colors and praying they won't get seen or spoken to. United fans are up lamp posts pointing out potential targets. At the train station, Wolves fans and police are bombarded with bottles and bricks. Absolute carnage, but according to a policeman there, a normal day for a United match. nineteen seventy six wolves v liverpool relegation and title decider it's estimated that thirty thousand liverpool descended on wolverhampton this night for a title and relegation deciding match if liverpool drew or won they won the title but a wolves win would keep them safe from relegation wolves are winning one nil but three goals in a second half onslaught from the mighty reds gives them the title and relegates wolves liverpool fans are on gantries and floodlight pylons trying to get a view from the overcrowded south bank there are three pitch invasions celebrating Liverpool's three goals and a massive pitch invasion at the end, with at least 5,000 scouses on the pitch. They walk up to the Wolves' north bankers but don't attempt to take the end, much to the Wolves fans' annoyance. Lots of fighting after the match with disgruntled Wolves fans trying to pick off pockets of Liverpool's celebrating fans. 1976 Notts Forest v Wolves 1,000 Wolves fans arrive late and are met by Forest executive crew who walked from their side end, through a gate and battered the newly arrived Wolves fans. There had previously been battles with other Wolves fans who had arrived by train, some of whom were thrown into the River Trent. 1977 Wolves v Cardiff. 
2,000 of Cardiff's sole crew arrive in the South Bank, but are met with a ferocious attack of Wolves South Bankers who break through the police cordon and surround the Cardiff crew. Police manage to restore order but not before the sole crew are attacked again and again. Only 500 were left at the end of the game and they had to face the nightmare of the subways. 1977 Wolves v Chelsea. An infamous affair, mainly because Chelsea fans were supposed to be banned after causing trouble at previous matches in the old Division 2. But they weren't going to miss this promotion decider and roughly 5,000 turned up on the Wolves South Bank, which you can see when Chelsea score their goal. Lots of trouble inside the ground then, with both sets of fans clashing in the South Bank and in the concourse beneath the stand. After the match, running battles, with the police struggling to regain control. My sources say it was pretty much even on the day. Nineteen seventy seven Bolton v Wolves. Ten thousand Wolves turn up for a Division Two, now the Championship promotion decider for Bolton, with Wolves already promoted and needing a win for the title. You can see the mass ranks of Wolves fans when they score their goal in this photo. Wolves win the game 1-0 and then storm the pitch. Bolton try to get onto the pitch but are held in check by the swarms of Wolves fans now congregating at the Bolton's end. One Wolves fan even uses a corner flag as a spear, throwing it javelin style into the Bolton fans. Running battles after the match and police take hours to restore order. You can just see the pitch invasion starting in this photo. 1977 Wolves v West Ham. 2000 ICF turn up for what they think would be an easy day out, but come under attack from the Wolves South Bankers. Police reinforcements are called in to thwart the brutal surges. Several times the Wolves hardcore break through and several times the ICF hold firm and manage to beat him off. I'm told by my West Ham contacts that they didn't expect that reception at Wolves who were well up for it. The ICF also had to have massive police escort after the game through the subways. My sources tell me Wolves had the upper hand in terms of aggression and attempting to get at their rivals. 1977 Wolves v Leeds United 3,000 leads turn up for this Boxing Day fixture, but are met by a howling pack of Wolves South Bankers who repeated charge the thin blue line of police. Eventually breaking through and attacking then chasing the fleeing Leeds fans. Leeds fans have since told me that it was the worst place they have ever been to including West Ham and Millwall. It was so bad that the Wolves mob didn't even have to ambush the Leeds fans in the infamous subways after the match because there wasn't any to be seen. The one match led to the installation of a massive fence right down the middle of the South Bank stopping most of the trouble inside the ground at least. 1977 Arsenal v Wolves, FA Cup. 5,000 Wolves are in the clock end at Arsenal for this FA Cup fourth round match, when the Chelsea headhunters arrive because their match had been postponed. At the end of the match, Arsenal's North Bank come round to the clock end and Wolves fans find themselves trapped between the two firms. Much fighting ensues with the Wolves firm coming off third best. 1978 Wolves v Chelsea. First away match of the new season and Chelsea take 3,000 into the now segregated South Bank. Major police presence stops any trouble in the South Bank, so Chelsea headhunters decide to leave the ground early. Their next move has caused much disdain amongst Wolves fans ever since. Chelsea didn't go into the Wolves enclosure to attack their main firms, but instead got access to the North Bank, where Wolves, normal, supporters were, women, kids and older non-fighting men. Chaos ensued, with a mini Hillsborough where several Wolves fans were injured in the crush to get away. Wolves fans in the South Bank on seeing this rush to attack the Chelsea, but they had apparently disappeared into the night after the result. You make your own mind up. Subway Army Years. 1982 Leeds United v Wolves. In 1982 after a triumphant away game at Leeds United in which the Subway had won a fight against their rival hooligans from Leeds, members of the Subway were making their way home after arriving back in Wolverhampton at around 9pm. On walking past the George Public House, now called the Varsity, they were confronted by a large gang of George Hotel lads, who had previously been involved in several violent fights with the Subway, most notably at Dunstall Racecourse. 
never ones to back down and despite being heavily outnumbered the subway ran at their rivals and a fight ensued. Within seconds the George firm retreated back into the George pub and locked the doors. It was then that one of the subway members realized he'd been stabbed. In the panic that ensued trying to get away from the arriving police, valuable time was wasted getting him to a hospital and unfortunately he died. A murder investigation was launched by West Midlands police and within hours the whole gang were arrested and put on remand. The lad that died was only 18 years old. This signaled the beginning of the end for the subway army. Most of its members were either sent to Borstal or jailed for their part in the fight. The George Hotel guy who stabbed the subway member received only three years jail for manslaughter. 1987 Scarborough v Wolves Scarborough's first match in the Football League and what a shock it must have been, as this was right in the middle of the subway army's reign of terror on lower league clubs. Wolves had drifted into Division 4 by this time due to mismanagement of the club, but still had massive support that was causing havoc at nearly every lower league club they visited. Fighting all day at this one with over 66 arrests and one Wolves nutter falling through the roof of the terrace. Two days later, the Football Association told the club that all of its away matches that season would be all ticket. In June 1988, 18 men were jailed after being convicted of taking part in the violence. This incident prompted West Midlands police to mount an undercover operation in which they would infiltrate the Wolves hooligans. This became known as Operation Growth, get rid of Wolverhampton's troublesome hooligans. It took another two years to jail everyone, but this signaled the end of the Subway Army, and the name has never been used since, contrary to what you think. Two thousand but other hooligans have since taken over, such as the Yam Yam Army and Wolves Youth. Despite the attempts by the authorities to sort out Wolverhampton hooligans, in August 2000, Wolves were listed as one of the most violent football clubs in England and Wales. 2001 Wolves v Millwall 250 Millwall bushwhackers burst through police lines at the train station and head for the Feathers pub near to Molyneux. They attack anyone drinking in the pub and two Wolves fans are slashed across the face with Stanley knives. Police arrive to restore order before the Wolves reinforcements arrive. 2002 Millwall v Wolves On the 5th of April 2002, in the return fixture, 500 Wolves hooligans arrived in Paddington with the intention of getting revenge. However, they were spotted by two police officers, and their coach was escorted to the den. A policing operation of over 300 police officers prevented the Millwall and Wolves groups from clashing. Police were pelted with bricks, bottles and fireworks by Millwall fans attempting to get to the Wolves fans. You can see in the video how many Wolves fans were in the away end. 2002 Sheffield Wednesday v Wolves On the 21st of April 2002, Wolves were playing away at Sheffield Wednesday a game which ended in a 2-2 draw and resulted in Wolves missing out on the second automatic promotion place in Division 1. Promotion instead went to their local rivals West Bromwich Albion. Before the game, members of the Sheffield United hooligan firm, the Blades business crew attempted to ambush Wolves fans at the railway station. 14 people were arrested. During the game about 500 Wolves fans who had got into a section of home seating at Hillsborough were moved into an empty corner of the stadium. After the match the trouble continued with the three rival groups of fans roaming Sheffield City Centre looking for trouble. Two police officers and a steward were injured during clashes. 2004 West Ham v Wolves. 30 Yam Yam Army meet 30 West Ham's ICF in a pre-arranged fight at Leicester Square Station in London. Wolves come out on top but nine are charged with serious disorder. One was even a nurse from Wolverhampton, who was said to be, egging them on. The video on YouTube shows the fighting, which I can't show for legal reasons. 
2011 West Brom v Wolves. Albion fans found themselves on the receiving end of further violence from Wolves hooligans on 20 February 2011, when a smoke bomb was thrown into an area of the Hawthorns occupied by Albion fans after a late West Brom equaliser. Albion fans retaliated and coins were thrown between the two sets of fans. There was also trouble when Wolves fans exited a tram and walked to the ground unescorted by police, and attacked West Brom fans on the way. Wolves Yam Yam Army are still active but trying to keep their nuts down, if you know what I mean. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell for news of new videos and to help our channel grow.